Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to a breaking news update. Watchman Newscast Live. It is Saturday night, almost 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's about, or I should say 8 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Central, where I'm coming to you from, Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm at TBN's global headquarters, The Plex, about to go live here on TBN, by the way, at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Watch it after this live stream, 9 p.m. Eastern, with up-to-date information on the ground reports from Israel, 9 p.m. Eastern on TBN, special report. But first, let's dig into this on the Watchman YouTube channel. Here is the state of play. And you all know what's happening right now. If you haven't, well, here we here we go. Let's get you up to speed. For the first time ever, Iran has launched an attack against Israel directly, not just through proxy. And they're doing that as well as we speak. The proxies are involved. The ring of fire, the Iranian ring of fire is ignited. But the Iranian regime launched from Iranian soil well over 100 attack drones. That's number one. Number two, over 100 at least ballistic missiles have been launched at Israel from Iranian soil. You might say, okay, it was from Iranian soil. What's the big deal? Again, I use this word, folks, strongly. It's unprecedented. Iran has never directly attacked Israel like it's doing right now in real time as I come to you. Right now, there are booms above Israel, sirens going off, but Iran has always acted through proxy. And now Iran's acting directly. Iran can't use plausible, or I call it implausible deniability this time, the projectiles initiated from Iran. So how will Israel respond? And it, an unprecedented attack by the Iranian regime, I believe, requires and will receive an unprecedented response from Israel. But here is the state of play. I just got off the phone, and I'm a little late to this live stream, folks. I apologize. I hope you understand. Uh, I'm reading text messages. I'm on the phone. I'm reading news alerts. I'm trying to prepare here, doing phone calls, as this is kind of a fire hose right now of information. As this is all happening, again, live in real time. Just spoke to someone who is close. Let's just say they are close to the prime minister's office in Israel. That's a good way to describe it. Uh, and in the know and in the room. And this individual told me, look, a few things. Uh, number one, Israelis obviously sheltering in place right now. Israelis will not sleep tonight, folks, throughout. it's Again, it's 8 o'clock here, almost e Eastern time, so it's 3 a.m. in Israel. Israelis won't sleep. But the projectiles are exploding not only in the north and south, places like Eilat, uh, the southernmost point of Israel, in the Golan Heights up north, but also in Jerusalem. Above Jerusalem, we have sirens. And here's a very interesting point that this individual shared with me. The U.S., the U.K., and France are assisting Israel in intercepting these incoming projectiles. Again, hundreds of attack drones and dozens upon dozens of ballistic missiles launched from Iran proper, from Iranian soil. But here's the interesting wrinkle, folks. Jordan and Saudi Arabia are reportedly also contributing and helping to shoot down these incoming projectiles. Wow. Wow. That's a big deal to have two Sunni Arab Muslim nations basically siding alongside Israel against the Iranian axis. And again, this shows us how the breakdown has been in the world's most chaotic and volatile region. On one hand, you have, on one side, you have Israel and the Sunni Arab nations like Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the UAE, the Gulf states, Morocco, and on the other side, that Iranian axis the Iranian regime, Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad in Gaza, the Shia militias in Iraq and Syria, the Houthis in Yemen. That's the ring of fire that surrounds Israel on all sides. And quick reminder, as Israel is being bombarded right now, folks, Israel is the size of the state of New Jersey. If you don't know the geography, the topography of the United States very well, New Jersey is very small. And so is Israel. And right now that ring of fire has ignited. I mentioned the drones and the missiles coming from Iran, well, the Houthis in Yemen to the south have opened fire. Hezbollah to the north has opened fire, and Shia militias in Iraq and Syria are also opening fire right now in real time on Israel. The ring of fire that we've talked about so much here in the Watchmen over the years is really igniting now. The only silver lining here is that Hamas and Islamic Jihad have been smashed so severely that I don't expect much to come out of Gaza 
in this engagement. But Hezbollah, obviously, the militias in Iraq and Syria and the Houthis, very active and essentially at full strength in many ways, although Hezbollah has taken lumps since October 7th in its daily engagements with Israel. But right now, look, if you're just joining us, Israelis sheltering in place, Israel preparing for this to come in waves, and it has come in waves over the past several hours. More waves of drones, more waves of ballistic missiles. Israel's weathering the storm. We do have one injury I can report to you folks. A Bedouin boy, a young boy, severely injured by shrapnel. We pray for that little boy, number one, that God brings him back to full health. Number two, we pray for no injuries at all. Any further injuries, no casualties, no death, of course, in Israel. I'm praying, and I want you to join me in prayer, that we have the Iron Dome in Israel, which is very active right now, obviously, shooting down these incoming projectiles from Iran and from the Ring of Fire. Let's pray for the ultimate Iron Dome, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to cover his land and his people right now like never before. And that brings me to the response. Now, Iran felt like it had to save face, right? After the death last week of Mohammad Reza Zahedi, the top Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps general, along with six other top officials in the Revolutionary Guards, Iran said, look, this can't go unanswered. It was a major blow. Israel struck and eliminated these seven Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps officials by striking the Iranian consulate in Damascus and literally, folks, toppling the building with these Iranian jihadis inside. Zahedi, it cannot be underestimated the role he played in the Iranian echelon, upper echelons. He was in charge, essentially, of the terror portfolio for Lebanon and Syria. He was very involved in directing Hezbollah's activities as well, or at least he was. After his elimination, Iran vowed revenge right away, right on up to the Supreme Leader on a daily basis over the past 12 days. And here we have it. We knew this day was coming because they feel, again, they have to save face. And this was maybe one of the most telegraphed attacks in history. All we've been hearing since last weekend is that Iran's going to attack. Now, last weekend, I was ready and, and poised to join you. We heard within 24 to 48 hours, Iran will attack. That was last weekend. Now the clamor started again this week. Then we had quiet last weekend. But this week, starting on Thursday, again, Iran's going to attack in the next 24 hours. Joe Biden comes out yesterday and says, we believe Iran is going to attack sooner rather than later. And I have one word for them. Don't. Well, so much for that. So much for the impact of the commander in chief. Iran heard him say don't. And they quite literally laughed and pushed the launch button on drones and ballistic missiles. But I digress. But we knew this was coming which means Israel knew it was coming, the U.S. knew it was coming, and to the credit of the U.S., of course, my country, the U.S. is intercepting these incoming missiles and drones. Thank God, alongside Israel, alongside apparently the U.K. and France, and as I said, folks, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, which is very interesting, definitely Jordan and reportedly the Saudis as well. We need to confirm that, but there, again, a source told me in Israel, close to the prime minister's office, that Saudi Arabia may be getting involved in this as well, not offensively, but defensively, helping to shoot down these projectiles. Talk about sending a message. That's encouraging, folks, that there is an alliance against Iran in the region. It's not just Iran on the march and Iran's ring of fire on the march across the region. Look, Iran essentially controls four Arab capitals, Sana'a in Yemen, Damascus in Syria, Baghdad in Iraq, and Beirut in Lebanon. So the long shadow of the Iranian regime descended upon the region, really over the past decade especially. But there are some who aren't going with the program, and Jordan, Saudi Arabia are two of them. And although I have to mention, Jordan has been very disappointing since October 7th in the constant rhetoric against Israel. You wouldn't know that Jordan and Israel have a peace treaty, judging by some of the comments coming from Jordan's foreign minister. But... Thank God, in Israel's time of need here, Jordan has stepped up. Uh, so you wonder sometimes how much in the Sunni Arab countries, like Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, it's condemnations of Israeli actions, 
But behind the scenes, they're saying, whew, thank God Israel did it. But for domestic consumption, for their many times rapidly anti-Israel populaces, these governments which have peace treaties with, with Israel or may soon have peace treaties with Israel, I'm talking about Saudi Arabia, at the governmental level, they have to say, Israel, you went overboard and condemn Israel again. But the back rooms are saying, thank God for Israel. Israel is the only one that stands up to that Iranian axis. And you're seeing that in real time right now. What about the response? That source I told you about, who is close to the prime minister's office, I asked about that. I said, look, number one, the Biden administration, I'd imagine, is begging you, begging Israel to not have a really forceful response. The word that the Biden administration often uses is proportionate including when the United States responds to these kinds of provocations. And this is much more than a provocation. This is a declaration of war from Iran, folks. It's a direct attack from one nation on another nation directly, not through proxy, not in the shadows, directly. And the U.S., this administration, has been fond of saying, well, we'll have a proportionate response. And I can tell you right now, they're arm twisting Israel and saying, please, please, uh, rain, rain it in now, respond, but not too harsh because you'll really set the region on fire. Guess what? The trains left the station. The region's been on fire for about 3,000 years, but especially since October 7, 2023. And we talk about escalation and Israel, quote unquote, escalated things with the takeout of Mohammed Reza Zahedi. Well, I think the ultimate escalation came on October 7th, or am I crazy? And that was an Iranian, Iran's fingerprints, the stamp of the Iranian regime was all over October 7th, folks. It does not happen without Iran. October 7th doesn't happen. And Iran can say, well, we didn't know. We didn't know this was going to happen. You may not have known the exact moment Hamas was going to launch the October 7th attack, but you knew it was coming because you'd been training Hamas to do exactly that for years, funding, arming them. And oh, by the way, in mid-September, a few weeks before the October 7th massacre, there were some 500 Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad operatives in Iran training. And they weren't training for ballet. They were training for October 7th or an October 7th style attack. The bottom line is this, it doesn't happen. I'm not sitting here right now talking about what we were talking about if Iran didn't engineer October 7th. Maybe at least not now. We knew the collision course was coming between Israel and Iran. But folks, I believe, and if you want to put your prophetic lens on right now, biblical lens, I said this on yesterday's newscast. And by the way, if you miss any of our newscasts, our updates, be sure to subscribe. Click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Hey, we just passed the 900,000 subscriber mark today for such a time as this. And people are coming on board because they want the truth in a time, in times where good is called evil and evil is called good. Times described very accurately by the prophet Isaiah. We're coming to you here with some biblical truth. This is hard news, breaking news, current events from a biblical perspective. And at the end of the day, that's the only perspective that matters because this is a spiritual battle. There are ultimately no political solutions here. It is literally a battle of good versus evil. And I can tell you that regime in Tehran is a wicked, demonic regime, not the people of Iran. Crucial, crucial distinction. The main victims of the regime, the government in Iran, have been the Iranian people for 45 years since that 1979 Islamic revolution. And the people of Iran are yearning for freedom to get out from under that jackboot of the mullahs. And one of the encouraging things to encourage you, I know this is heavy news. Number one, God sits on the throne. He's in control. And number two, the world's fastest growing church right now is in Iran. Would you believe it? The world's number one state sponsor of terrorism is also home to the world's fastest growing Christian church. Largely underground, Iranians are turning to Jesus in droves. They can't do it openly because they will then be deemed apostates. They'll be tortured, imprisoned, killed. And they know the threat is there, but they're turning to Jesus anyway. So be encouraged on this very heavy Saturday night, folks. And remember that Iran is a Bible land. 
You might say, what are you talking about? Iran is a Bible land. Iran was once known as Persia in Bible times. I believe we're in Bible times once again right now, but thousands of years ago, ancient Persia was modern day Iran. Yes, Mordecai, Esther, Darius, Cyrus, from your Bible, that took place in Iran. It's a Bible land, and I don't believe God is done with Iran. And I believe eventually he'll pour out his spirit on that nation, and this regime will be gone. And I have to say, tonight, it may have just written its death warrant and its expiration date, because Israel is going to respond. And that conversation I had with that source a little while ago, I said, look, I know the Biden administration is going to plead you for a, quote, proportionate response. And all this person said was, this isn't over. This isn't over. Didn't didn't address the Biden stuff, just said this isn't over. We will respond. And some are saying, um, and, um, again, I said this at the top, an unprecedented attack requires an unprecedented response. That's what many are saying right now. So how will Israel respond? Folks, I don't think anyone knows except the men and women sitting in the war cabinet in Jerusalem right now, where they may be at the Kyria in Tel Aviv, actually, the military headquarters there. Nonetheless, the military cabinet met, they convened, and they're deliberating as we speak. And who knows, uh, in the middle of the night, it may be the response, but I'll be back with you tomorrow, no doubt. Again, that's why you need to subscribe Sign up. It's completely free, by the way, to subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button. It's free. And click the notification bell, and we'll let you know what time we'll be on tomorrow. But what do you think, folks, my great viewers, such an informed audience that we have? That's why it's a pleasure and a privilege coming to the Watchman audience. What do you think? How will Israel respond here? Uh, I'm not one to play armchair general, so to speak, but I'll just say this. It's an unprecedented attack. And if we have Israeli casualties, if these projectiles are hitting civilian targets, I mean, folks, this is the first time that a sovereign nation has launched attacks on Israel directly. Remember, it hasn't been nations attacking Israel for the past 50 years. Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, the militias in Iraq and Syria, Palestinian terrorists in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, these aren't nation states. Iran is a nation state. It's a sovereign nation. It's a UN member state. And it directly attacked Israel. The first time that's happened since the Gulf War in 1991 when Saddam Hussein and Iraq launched Scud missiles at Tel Aviv. Now, Israel stayed its hand that time. The U.S. and the global coalition that gathered against Saddam Hussein, said, Israel, don't react, because if you do, we'll lose Syria. There were other, there were Arab nations in that coalition against Iraq going back 30-something years, 33 years. So Israel held its peace, I guess you would say, and did not respond directly to Iraq. No, well, that ain't going to be the case this time, folks. Israel's going to respond. What does an unprecedented response look like? I think everything's on the table right now. It depends on the amount of pressure exerted by the Biden administration in many ways, I think. But I'll leave you with this. Iran's nuclear facilities. Is it? Does Israel take this moment and say, you know what, Iran? You open the door now. You've handed it to us on a silver platter. Now that you've directly struck us, mano y mano, nation to nation, we have every right to respond with full and overwhelming force. And that could include Iran's nuclear facilities. It may not. I don't know. But I will tell you, perhaps expect the unexpected. But Israel is going to respond. And if you're in Israel and you're in that war cabinet right now meeting, you might be saying they finally did it. Now Israel doesn't have to worry about, at least in the short term, world condemnation saying you can't strike Iran. Israel will say they just struck us. We have to respond. So Israel has a rare and unique little window here, and it will probably shut very fast because it shut very fast, as I predicted, after October 7th. Uh, a few days later, the world was lashing Israel as it started to strike back against Hamas terrorists in Gaza. But Israel has an opportunity here to strike Iran, and Israel, even in the eyes of this quote-unquote world community, has every right to do so. 
uh, it's inarguable that Israel was attacked directly by Iran. And now the response. But first, a very long night in Israel, folks, and a sleepless night for Israelis. And perhaps more of these Iranian attacks come in waves. Perhaps they extend to targeting U.S. troops in the region, Iraq and Syria. It's a tinderbox right now. Everything's on the table. It's unprecedented in many ways. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem like never before. We have a biblical mandate to do so, and never more so than in Israel's time of greatest need. I believe the time of Jacob's trouble that the Bible discusses, it's coming, folks. These are birth pangs right now, the wars, the rumors of war. There are larger prophetic events coming down the pike, perhaps sooner rather than later. I don't know, but I know what the Bible says, and this is lining up pretty eerily accurately. And even if you're not a believer, you might say, oh, it's all hogwash. Well, I wouldn't be so sure. So folks, continue to pray. And I'll come back to you tomorrow with an update. And let's lift Israel up and pray for a divine iron dome over God's land on this very tumultuous and eventful Saturday night that I'll never forget. Until tomorrow, thanks so much for joining us here. God bless you. Remember, this is not done. 9 p.m. Eastern Time on TBN, the world's largest Christian television network, TBN, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time here in the United States. Also, you can watch on TBN Plus. That's the TBN app or tbnplus.com. TBN Plus, tbnplus.com. If you don't have a TV, whatever, but TBN. Watch on your big screen, however you want to watch it, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I am coming to you live. I will be joined by our good friend Yair Pinto of TBN Israel. You see him here on YouTube. He's got a great channel. And some other special guests breaking down, and that's 45 minutes from now, so I'll have even more up-to-date information by then to be continued. 9 p.m. Eastern Time, TBN, TBN Plus. Until then, God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.